this video, we'll talk about the Patient tab. As you can see, we're highlighted in blue here on this particular tab. And the menu option on the left, we have Patient highlighted. Additionally, Patient name here, the first line, is also highlighted. You can see we have first name, middle name, and last name. If you're used to using Firehouse, typically when you put in a last name, uh, it will search a database and pull up the patient based upon previous contacts with that patient. Unfortunately, Zoll doesn't work in that same fashion. What we do have for options though is down here, we have recent patients as well as common patients. Recent patients is anybody you've interacted with and put a report in for the last 24 hours, so for your shift day. Let's say you have a refusal on someone and you go back when they decide they want to be transported. That information is then stored locally on your machine for 24 hours. So there is a record of that patient. Common patients is anybody you've had contact with in the past 90 days. This is a rolling database of patients and it is strictly local to your computer. So if you worked on Ambulance 2 for the day when you encountered a patient and then you worked on Ambulance 4 the next day and encountered that same patient they're different machines, different computers, tablets, so they won't have that information stored. It is simply stored locally on that machine for 90 days. So if you're in your same district and you see someone an awful lot, that information will be stored. reason um, this occurs, the reason we can't store every patient is because the software operates without having to connect to a server. So therefore, in order to store all the patients, we'd have to store everyone on every single tablet, which creates a space issue and also a privacy issue should a um, tablet ever go missing or be stolen. So that's why we cannot have every single patient stored. We do have the option of recent patients and common patients. When I go to enter information, if I hit tab, it will take me down to the next line. But if I hit enter, it won't let me do anything. So we can tab through. When I get to the last one, I hit tab, it takes me to the gender. I can then click through. Under the date of birth tab, we have uh, the option for recent patients and common patients again. The date of birth will go in as a month, day, and year, two digit, two digit, and four digit respectively. You can see there's one that was filled in previously here. So I will input. Let's do January 1st. Calculates the years automatically. If we roll upon a scene where we're not sure of a patient's age, let's say, um, if you have a man down, some situation like that where you're not quite sure, there's no idea in the patient, you can click approximate. You can select years, months, days, hours, etc. And it will note on your report that you put approximately next to it. If it's a newborn, if you delivered a baby, click newborn, it'll automatically fill in for the date for you and indicate newborn. Below that we have race, ethnicity, and then weight. With the particular weights, it'll automatically calculate pounds to kilograms and kilograms to pounds respectively. Um, so if you have the radio dial next to pounds selected, put in 180, hit tab, it'll calculate it automatically for you. Under facility list here, our facility name, you'll see we have home address. The reason we have a whole list of hospitals here is the same reason we had underneath our trip tab for scene of address. It's this one type of list that uh, that's populated that we can create for all different types of facilities we might frequent. So, But it also pulls in the same list of hospital destinations. So if there was nothing, you can click none. Home address line one. You can also copy an address. If you have inputted one in your trip earlier, you can copy it over. This would be an apartment number. Of course, the zip code. Once I put in the zip code, automatically fills in the state, city, and the county. Telephone.
patient's home country. This actually is a Nemesis requirement and is not able to be defaulted. We would love to have defaulted it to the United States, but that's not uh, always possible. So you can, as you can see, you can search down here at the bottom. So you have to go through the entire list to get there. Advanced directives, if there's a DNR form uh, present, again, another Nemesis State of Illinois requirement. Uh, mark if there is one. We did default Braslo utilized and not applicable. If there was a pediatric call where you utilized a Braslo, indicate which color you used. Again, a Nemesis requirement for all calls. Under the billing tab, primary payment is defaulted to not known because we're not going to know this information. If your department does something different, please talk to your EMS coordinator and see what options you might uh, be selecting on this side. CMS service level as well as condition codes, more Nemesis requirements. Um, they're broken down here into a few different things. These probably look familiar to some people. Um, BLS, BLS emergency level 1, ALS level 2 ALS. We also have resident ALS, BLS, non-resident ALS, and BLS. Uh, what I will tell you is go by what your department's uh, EMS coordinator instructs you to do for this particular portion. Uh, this is a Nemesis requirement to have this field answered, but they're all mapped specifically and accordingly, so it's not like there's a wrong one. It will provide data to Nemesis, but um, it's a billing thing for your department, so whatever your department instructs you to do, um, do for the CMS service level. Condition code, again, another billing thing, uh, also a Nemesis requirement. So, again, this list might be familiar to a few of you out there. That's all it is for the patient tab. Uh, next video we'll talk about patient history tab.